Okay, I should start this story by giving a bit of background so that you understand the situation a bit better. I, 4 foot 9, 16 year old female at the time, had two dogs who were brothers from the same litter. Now, being boxers, they were relatively big and quite protective when needed to be. Vince was longer, much taller than his brother, and is usually the kind to sleep through a hurricane if we had one. His brother, Maury, was shorter, but more muscled, and stronger as well. Usually these two were with me 24-7, as my mother used to work a lot, and I was usually alone most of the day, sometimes even until after dark. This, however, never really bothered me. I'd been left alone at home like this since I was 11 years old. It never struck me that I had a reason to be worried whatsoever. One day that my mom was working later, I was doing some household chores, feeding the dogs, doing dishes, stuff like that. I continued doing what I always had, a routine of tidying the house I had done every day for years. As I went to take the trash out of the bin, I started walking towards the door when Maury stepped in front of me. I tried moving around him, bear in mind, telling him to get out of my way and such, but he refused to budge. This was certainly odd, and looking back on it now, a few years later, I realized he was probably trying to stop me from walking outside. Anyway, we continued like this for a few moments, me trying to get past him and such. Of course, never moving from his spot. He was quite heavy as a big dog. It was difficult to lift him, and even harder to get him away from something too. Now, in the time we had been going back and forth with this interaction, Vince stayed happily asleep on his dog bed. I should note that, from my kitchen, you can see the living room, as well as the bathroom. Usually we used the side door from the kitchen to enter slash exit the house, since it is attached to the carport. Nevertheless, after a couple of more minutes, I heard something I hadn't expected when I made one last desperate attempt to move Maury from his spot. He growled, which wasn't unusual as he had growled plenty of times in his life, but what was unusual was that he growled at me. He had never done that before, not once, but for that reason, and that reason alone, I decided not to take the trash out that night. I simply tossed it in another room and let it be. A short time passed, maybe a half hour or so. I had gotten settled into my chair to watch some movie while I waited on my mom to come home. While I was watching the movie, I suddenly heard a quiet knock at the side door. As I mentioned earlier, you can clearly see the living room from the kitchen, so I heard the knock pretty well. It was already after dark, so I figured it was just my mother and she had somehow forgot her keys. So I got up, went into the kitchen, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw the hook near the door. The keys were not there. To some people, that's not a big deal, but to me, it meant that the person knocking on my door was in fact not my mother. My mom is a bit of a routine obsessed person, so if she actually had forgotten her keys, they would always be on the hook. Anyway, I took a breath, preparing myself to just not answer the door, or if they didn't leave, to just tell them I wasn't interested in whatever was happening and that they should leave. Thinking about it now, I really wish I hadn't even looked out the window on the door. I wish I'd just sat back down, called my mom, and stayed out of sight. But of course, I walked in front of the door and immediately came face to face with a figure on the other side of the window. Now, it was really dark with just my neighbor's light shining from his porch, so I could only make out a couple of things on this guy. He was tall, 
me having to peer up at him through the window to look at his face. He had long hair that looked like a shadow over his shoulders in the dim light, but the only facial features I could really see were his eyes. God, I wish I hadn't seen them. I could see the spark of interest flare in them as he perked up when he saw me. They were wide and staring down at me. He took a step towards my door, stepping up on the first of two steps. I heard him say something along the lines of, My car broke down nearby. Could I come in and use your phone? Immediately, I thought of every bad thing that I've ever heard happening to a teenager home alone and tried to compose my nerves. I'm not sure what it was, but something told me not to trust this man standing on the other side of my door. I shouted back a quick no, as well as an apology, hoping he was telling the truth and would just go to the next house over. But he didn't. Instead, he simply said it again, quite a bit louder, mind you. I thought for a quick moment he hadn't heard me, but then again, I know now that he most likely had. So I instead became a bit more confident, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Go to the next house, I shouted louder. For a moment, he paused, as if contemplating what to do. Then he knocked again, louder than the first time I'd heard it. My heart rate increased as I stared at him. When I didn't react, he started to loudly bang against the door. I took a step back now, praying to whatever god that he would either leave or my mom would be home early. I was usually a quiet girl, but my mom was a badass redneck with a raptor knife. She could take him out if she wanted to. He started to bang on the glass after a moment, my mind racing a thousand miles an hour. Should I hide? Should I run? My phone was in the other room, and I was scared to take my eyes off of the guy. I was sure he would break through the glass. The banging was now vibrating my eardrums, and apparently it was vibrating Maury's too. I saw him creeping up past the doorway, bending his head, teeth barred. He started to bark, loudly. The guy stopped a moment, trying to see into the window at the floor where Maury stood. When he stopped barking, the guy mistakenly tried to jiggle the door handle. Now that's when Vince woke up. I swear to you that for a dog that was dead asleep five seconds prior, I'd never seen him move that fast, ever. In only two seconds, Vince had his paws up on the door, growling like a hellhound at the devil's side at this man outside my home. The guy jumped, fell back, and bolted it. I heard him say something as he started to run, and I saw another shadow. My mom came home shortly after I had sprinted across my carport to my neighbors. We called the police after I explained what had happened, and my neighbor had dragged his shotgun out before they even got there. He had insisted on looking for the guy. The police had said someone tried to pick the lock on my front door, but there was a lot of stuff in front of it, and it was really old, so it didn't open anymore. I went to bed that night, uneasy, and so very thankful I had two dogs who were not only strong and big, but one that was vigilant, and one that could practically kill you if you let him. A few weeks went by, and we hadn't heard from the cops, so eventually I stopped trying to think about it. Another month went by, and although I was a bit scared of being home alone, nothing else seemed to happen. Then we got another visit from the cops, and what they told me made my heart sink in my chest, and still to this day gives me the chills. They had caught the guys and realized that they were stalking me, Yes, guys, plural. There were two guys that had apparently been stalking me without my knowledge, and that was for many months. They had several photos of me, 
words they had written over them. Awful words. The police had been fairly adamant that I changed my locks since they caught two guys and there was evidence of a third as well. We moved shortly after that. I still pass by that house sometimes when I go to visit friends or do some stuff around that area. A chill runs down my spine every time that I do. To think that they never caught one of the guys was scary enough. The fact that they tried to break into my house was worse. Not to mention that I hadn't even known that they were watching me. I still think about it, even now, a few years later. I dread what would have happened if my dogs weren't there, and I dread even worse about what they had planned to do if I had opened the door or if they had successfully broken in. I suppose they weren't expecting my dogs since our backyard is fenced and they mostly stayed indoors since it was hot where I lived. I thank the universe every day that I had them, especially now. My mom never worked until after dark again after that whole situation, which in all honesty was fine with me. So anyway, to the man they still haven't caught yet, let's not meet. I'm new to this sub, but I've spent the last few days reading so many of these stories, and to be honest with you all, I'm hooked. I have told this story to friends before, but not to really many of them. I will provide a bit of context and background for everyone before I get into the meat and potatoes of this story. I'm currently 29 years old, I'm female, and this took place when I was 14 years old. I just started the 8th grade. I grew up in southeast Texas, and as I'm sure many of you all know, fall is still very much a part of hurricane season. Anyway, it was a Friday night, and it was just me and my mom at home. My dad was, at the time, out of town for work. I originally had plans to go spend the night at a friend's house, but there was a tropical storm coming and my mom decided last minute that she would rather have me at home that night. I was sort of pissed off. Tropical storms weren't normally looked at too seriously. I honestly felt like she was overreacting. Of course, this was my I'm 14 years old and therefore I'm a grown up mentality at work here. My mom did feel bad and so we rented a bunch of movies and ordered a pizza and got a bunch of ice cream for a great night in. As for my parents' bedroom, it was on the opposite end of the house from mine. Now, okay, this is important for later, bear in mind. We lived in a split-level house. The house I grew up in was built in 1950, and it was a postmodern style. Think Frank Lloyd Wright sort of style. The entire back part of the house was all floor-to-ceiling windows, about 8 to 9 feet tall. Think of just a huge wall of glass. The whole house was an open floor plan, so the kitchen was the first to find room, with walls on the first floor, and my bedroom was directly off of the kitchen, while my parents' room was at the top of the stairs. I apologize if this is difficult to visualize. This was a modern-style house, and it's difficult to describe. She had gone to bed around 10 p.m., and I went to my room to watch two movies that I had rented for just myself. The storm was really starting to kick into high gear. The wind was picking up, and it was raining sideways as well. I was in the middle of watching The New Guy. Yeah, I know. And I still remember looking at my clock, and it said 12.53 a.m. I was getting pretty tired and could feel my eyes getting heavy. With the weather so bad, I remember thinking that maybe it wasn't so bad I had to miss the sleepover. I must have dozed off, because the next thing I remember is a sudden, huge crash. It was one of the big windows in either the dining room or living room. Our neighborhood was in a really wooded area, and I thought that a tree or a branch had fallen in the storm and had broken the window. I left my room 
and went through the kitchen. And right as I was approaching the doorway from the kitchen to the dining room area, I could see my mom coming down the stairs. I saw a man standing in our dining room who was covered in broken glass and blood as well. Due to where he was standing, I couldn't get to my mother. He was young, early 20s, and was soaking wet and had no shoes on. He had literally run through our window. He was bleeding all over, had a glass sticking out of him, and was standing barefoot in a bunch of broken glass. It took him a second to register both me and my mother, but when he did, he immediately launched into an explanation of how he was being chased by someone who wanted to kill him, and that we needed to call the cops. My still fairly innocent 14-year-old brain didn't doubt this at all, but my mom was eyeing him suspiciously. We move into the kitchen, and my mom grabs her purse and my arm to keep me close as well. I'd grabbed a kitchen towel to try and help his bleeding. My mom now pulls out her cell phone and begins calling our neighborhood patrol. I notice this, and so on our landline I call 911. We both finish our calls, and now we're just waiting. The guy couldn't sit still, and kept getting up and looking through our kitchen windows and pacing back and forth. He didn't seem to notice that he was all cut up and bleeding everywhere. He starts muttering under his breath, and what happens next happens really fast, and it becomes blurry a bit. But the doorbell rings. It was our neighborhood patrol that my mom had called. The doorbell sent the guy into a panic. He jumps up, and suddenly he grabs a hold of me. He now has me in a chokehold, and my mom is now screaming to please let me go. He starts looking around all frantically and is pulling me through the dining room and living room towards our stairs. At some point, the bell rings again. My mom is following and is still begging to let me go to the guy. He has me at the stairs, and my mom has the choice now to go to the front door to open it or follow him up the stairs. She runs for the door just as he pulls me up the last of the stairs. I hear our alarm now start blaring. Normally we arm it at night, so you would need to type in a code before opening a door. He pulls me into my parents' room, but as soon as we get into the room, he drops me and starts to freak out. It was apparently all the lights that got to him. He starts smashing lamps, trying to get all the lights off, screaming that they were burning him. There is a small garden off my parents' bedroom, and they have garden lights they turn on at night. He takes a chair and throws it at the glass door, trying to smash it so he can get to those lights. At least, that's what it looks like. I had crawled to a corner to get away from him at this point. When he completely turns away from me to grab another chair, I make my run for it. I run down the stairs. The cops had made it into the house at this point and were at the bottom of the stairs, with their guns drawn. One of them grabs my arm and pulls me out of the way once I reach the bottom, and takes me outside to an ambulance, as well as my mother. The adrenaline is coming down at this point, and it hits me what's happened, and so I start shaking, and can suddenly feel pain around my throat from where he had been holding me in a chokehold. There is a lot of yelling and screaming from inside, and then maybe 10 minutes later, the cops come out with a guy in handcuffs. He sees me and tries to lunge at me, which, to be honest with all of you, was completely terrifying. I had a bruised windpipe, but was otherwise a-okay. I learned later on that the guy was 20 years old and a chemistry major at one of the universities in town, together with some friends also chem students. They had made their own PCP. He had never tried PCP before, and obviously had a bad reaction. They had been driving to get some food when he first started acting paranoid and upset, and then at the drive through insisted they let him out and took off. Thinking you're being chased is actually a common hallucination to have when you start having a bad trip on PCP. 
The light sensitivity is also a common side effect in general for being high on PCP, but he wasn't a bad kid. He had never been in trouble before, was actually a good student, and pretty much the last person you'd think of that would do something like this. Our house was the only one on our street that wasn't completely fenced off, and that's how he was able to reach the back as well as those windows. When I got older, it really hit me just how easy it is to become that kid. I had friends who wound up being chemistry majors and also DIY'd some of their own drugs. Now, thankfully, that night didn't actually end up worse because it definitely could have gone in an entirely different direction. So let's go back all the way to the mid 80s. We lived in the suburbs in a close knit community, so I never had really any worries at all. 11 year old me is home alone during summer break from school. My mom and dad both worked, so I was just chilling in the living room blasting the stereo with the front door wide open. A bit of backstory. My cousin was dating a guy named Jeff. They are married now with kids. Me and him hit it off instantly. He was a few years older than me, but he treated me like a little brother. So we talked shit and pestered each other quite a bit. At this time, we were fairly new in the friendship, but he would call to check up on me. Phone rings. At this time, we didn't have all the fancy things like cell phones or even caller ID. We had a push button phone, which we had just bought to replace the old school rotary dial phone not too long before then. Here's how this conversation goes like. Me. Hello? Caller. Hey, what's going on? I was thinking, it's Jeff. Me. Nothing? Just hanging out around the house. Caller. Are your parents home? Jeff knew my parents' work, but maybe he thought they were off that day. Me. No, they're both at work. Caller. Oh, okay, so what are you wearing? Huh? This is odd, but this would be something Jeff would say just to mess with me. Me. A t-shirt and shorts? Caller. Are you wearing underwear? What kind? It dawns on me that this is not Jeff. It sounded like him, but holy balls, it's not him. Me. Who is this? Caller. David. Me. David who? Caller. David Sanders. Who the hell is David Sanders? Me. What do you want? Caller. Just wanted to talk to you. Me. Yeah, I have to go. Caller. Okay, I'll see you soon. That's the end of the call. At this point, my mind is racing. I have no idea what just happened. I just talked to this dude I don't know for about five minutes and told him my parents weren't home. What was I wearing? Wait, did he just say talk to you soon? What the hell? Well, okay, I've heard of prank calls before. Someone, however, was just calling random people and screwing with them. Yeah, that's what it must have been, right? So for about 20 or so minutes, I'm roaming around the house, with the door open blasting music, trying to shake off that call. My mind keeps repeating that last line, however. See you soon. But there's no way he could have been serious, right? Well, okay, let's go ahead and shut and lock the front door, just to be sure. Three minutes later. Knock, knock, knock. I walk up to the front door, and without opening it, ask through the door, Who is it? He replies, It's David. No way. I step to the window by the door and peek out. Sure enough, there's a guy in his mid-twenties looking back at me, smiling, and gives a quick wave. This cannot be happening. This cannot, can it? I say, What do you want? David says, just wanted to hang out with you. My mind is blank. What do I say? What do I do? Um, my dad is home. He's in the bathroom. 
What the hell, man? Well, that was the best I could do. Well, okay, bye, he says. No way this can be that easy, right? Nope. I see the doorknob turn. This creep is trying to get in. Luckily, it is locked. So I wait a few seconds and look out the window, but no one's there. Wait, what was that? I hear someone in the bushes by the front bedroom. I run in there, and the guy is trying to open the window. It's locked. He tries the next one, and it's locked as well. Adult me would have called 911 as soon as he showed up, and talked to him through the door until they showed up. But 11 year old me? Well, I call my mom. After that day, my parents set up a system that they would call and let it ring, hang up, then call again, and of course don't leave the door open, that sort of thing. I never heard from David again, though when I was older, I sure thought I would have had liked to have some sort of explanation to him on why he shouldn't be trying to pick up young boys. TLDR 11 year old me is home alone. Stranger calls, then shows up to my house, uninvited. This happened several years ago, when I used to live with my ex-boyfriend. We had recently moved into a two-bedroom house, and we were set to work and turn it into a home. We turned the back bedroom into an office as the house only had the one bathroom and it could only be accessed through this bedroom. We would have people crash on our sofa pretty regularly and we didn't fancy them having to trapeze through our own bedroom so they could go to the loo in the middle of the night. So we'd been living there for roughly one month when this event occurred. My ex was out with work colleagues and I was home alone. I'd spent the early evening watching TV and eating takeout. A couple of times, I heard some strange noises, but whenever I would try and zone in on them to figure out what the hell it was, it would stop. It got later, and I decided to go upstairs and use the computer for a little while before then heading to bed. At this point in time, we hadn't had our phone line installed, and I was still on a pay-and-go phone which had run out of credit. I basically had no way to communicate with anyone whilst I was in the house that night. So anyway, I'm sitting in the back bedroom with only a small table lamp on that barely forms a glow whilst I'm typing away on my laptop. And that's when I heard noises again. It started as a light rattling noise, really faint to the point I had to strain to see if I was really hearing it or imagining it. I shut my music off and tried to figure out what it was. I went into our bedroom and looked down to the front door, but nobody was there. I go back into the back bedroom, but I can't see much out the window. We had a small yard with a high brick wall and a solid wooden gate with nothing to cast any light. But from what little I could see, there was nothing out back either. So I sat back down and switched the music back on. Maybe 10 minutes later, I hear this eerie screeching sound, like metal on metal, again very faint, as if whatever was making it was trying desperately to be quiet. I was getting more than a little freaked out by this point. So I went into our bedroom to retrieve this heavy iron rod. We'd found it in the back of the built-in wardrobe. I didn't switch on any lights, as I didn't know what was going on and didn't want to alert any possible intruder to my location inside the house. Remember, I had no way of calling anyone and I was getting more than a little concerned that someone might actually be in my house. So I made my way back into the office slash bedroom and closed the door as quietly as possible before bolting it and lodging a chair under the handle. 
Nothing more happens for a good solid 20 minutes or so. I start to feel a little foolish for letting myself get worked up, and I put it down to it being my first night alone in the house. But I don't switch the music back on this time, which was lucky because I started to hear a sound like two people whispering. Both were male voices. They didn't sound like they were coming from inside the house though. I had the office slash bedroom window open ever so slightly, and the sound seemed to be floating in from there. So I headed into the bathroom to see if I can get a better look into the alley that the house backed onto. The office slash bedroom and the bathroom formed an L around the yard with the bathroom extending further out. I climbed up onto the ledge and inched the window open to try and see out into the alleyway. I couldn't see a thing, but the whispering was louder and coming from directly behind my gate. I couldn't hear whole sentences, but heard enough to summarize whoever these men were. They'd seen us move in and had seen we had quite a lot of valuable equipment. Guitars, computers, my DSLR, TV, games, consoles, etc. I imagined they'd seen I was home alone and been waiting for me to go to sleep to try and get into the house. I stayed perched there for what felt like an eternity until what seemed like the loudest thud in the world echoed up to me. They'd grown tired of trying to be stealthy and one or both of them were throwing themselves at my gate trying to break it down. I could see it shuddering under the blows and could only imagine how large these men must be. I'm a tiny girl, all of five foot three, and at that point weighed somewhere around 105 pounds. As you can imagine, I was white with terror as I watched my gate groan under the stress. I sat clutching the iron rod as I tried to think where I could hide from these guys. Suddenly a glaring light blinded me. At first I panicked and dropped out of sight thinking they were shining a torch at the back of the house, but then I heard a barking and a shouting. I peeked out again and saw the house which was across the alleyway from us had a floodlight installed and it was illuminating both their own yard, mine, and the alley with light. I heard a grumbling and cursing and then two sets of footsteps hurrying down the alleyway. I stayed locked in that back bedroom until my ex-boyfriend drunkenly rolled in at about 4am. Needless to say, I didn't sleep a wink that night and when I went into the yard in the morning, my gate was hanging by one hinge, allowing easy access from the alley. When I looked at the back of it, the keyhole was covered in scratches, as if someone had tried to force the lock. If they hadn't woken the house behind us, I dread to think just what could have possibly happened to me. TLDR Two men had tried to break into my house the first night that I spent alone, and I woke up to find my gate absolutely obliterated. In the summer of 2010, I discovered that I don't know how to react when I'm faced with potentially dangerous situations, as well as various things. It must have been at least one in the afternoon when I finally decided to get ready for the day and shower. I wasn't working at that point, so my motivation wasn't exactly at its peak, and both my parents were at work, so they couldn't nag me about it. While I was getting dressed, I heard drawers being opened in my parents' room, which my room shares a wall with. Despite the fact that they were being opened and closed very quickly, with surprising force mind you, I just shrugged it off, figuring my dad had come home from work. Once I had clothes on, I went to ask him how his morning was. Instead, of seeing my dad, I ran into a guy who looked a little older than me. I was 16 years old at the time, standing at the top of the stairs. By the look on his face, 
He didn't expect to see me just as much as I didn't expect to see him. I actually attributed his shocked expression to the fact that I hadn't brushed my hair yet and it looked as though I had stuck my finger in his socket. Seeing as he was pretty young, I just thought he was a friend of my younger sister who was in the basement having a sleepover with her friend. To make the situation less awkward for the guy, who I assumed was just grabbing something for them and was heading back downstairs. He had something in his hand. Turns out it was a bag filled with some of my family's belongings. I smiled and said, Hi. Not surprising, he didn't say anything back, but turned and bolted downstairs. I was a little weirded out. So I went back into my room to finish getting ready. When I actually looked decent, I went into my parents' room to see my dad, because I still, naively, assumed that he was home. He wasn't, and instead, I found a ton of things thrown across the floor, drawers pulled out, and the closets open and in disarray. That's finally when I put two and two together. Holy crap, I just interrupted a burglary. Now freaking out. I ran downstairs to grab a phone and noticed that the screen from a window in the front of our house was now lying on the floor. Both the front and the back door were unlocked as well. Locking them now, I went to go check on my sister and her friend. They were both still asleep so I woke them up asking if they had a male friend over. They just looked confused as heck and they told me no. That's when I finally decided to use the phone I had been carrying around with me and called both of my parents instead of the police because, forget logic, while my sister's friend called her mom to come over and wait with us until my parents arrived. I think in the end it was actually the friend's mom who called the police for us. After that, I was constantly in and out of the police station to give statements help with the police composite sketch, and all that fun stuff. They did end up catching the guy, and most of my family's belongings were returned to us, along with a ton of other things that had been stolen from other homes. It turns out he was part of a bunch of teenagers who were looking for houses to break into so they could sell things for drug money. Looking back on the whole thing, I know how lucky I was that he wasn't armed, or even really dangerous, but I can't help but laugh at the time that I kindly greeted the guy that was robbing us with a friendly hello. TLDR. Some guy broke into our house. I accidentally caught him in the act, and instead of calling the police, I just said hi to him. This happened about seven years ago, so it won't be perfectly accurate. Now to set the scene. I live in the outskirts of a town at the end of terraced houses, and there are a lot of houses in my area, in front, as well as behind. I was home alone, with three dogs. My boyfriend was over his friends, a three minute walk away. At this time, we didn't really lock the front door if one of us was in the house. Now I do. Nothing really happened where we lived. We had three decent sized dogs and we were a bit naive. To be fair, I had recently moved in here with my boyfriend and before I lived in a small village where everyone knew everyone and you could actually leave your door unlocked. So I was set in my pajamas, watching TV with all the dogs next to me, and that's when the door knocks. It was about 10 p.m., and I was in my pajamas, so I was a bit annoyed. I got the dogs off of me and walk out of my living room and pull the living room door closed, closing the dogs in. Bear in mind, this took me all of 10 seconds, and as I approach the door, it swings open and this man I've never seen before, nor met, storms into my house and gets right in my face. There's also another man and woman right behind him who didn't enter my house. 
Me, literally frozen in shock. The man says, Who the hell do you think you are? Me, I'm still silent and I'm in complete shock. You think you can run around here and do what you want causing shit? I say, What are you on about? He replies back, Don't give me that shit. Do you think I'm a Muppet? I saw you and all your little friends running back into this house. I'm literally standing here in my pajamas. I haven't been outside, I told him. Yeah, okay. Do you think I was born yesterday? He said angrily. Me. Well, you just walked into someone's house that you've never met. And you scream at her? So, yeah, maybe. And the other man chimes in and says, Maybe it wasn't her. I reply with, Maybe? At this point, my dog started barking behind the door. The man stares at me for what seems like forever, probably a couple of seconds, and then quickly walks out and slams the door shut. I was stood there shaking for a few seconds before I started to just get mad. That's when I realized what had just happened. I lock the door and I ring my boyfriend straight away, who gets home in about one minute flat, but the group was nowhere to be seen. We didn't call the police. I didn't really want to. Don't ask me why. I couldn't really give my boyfriend a good description when he was asking. In the seven years since, I have not bumped into these people again, thank God, and I always lock the door now. Thankfully, as we have had two other occasions where people have come late at night, but those are other stories for another day. However, if it did happen again, I would like to think that I would handle it a lot better now. But, rude creepy man who stormed into my house late at night. Let's not meet again. I lived in the middle of nowhere, in the country, and the closest house was a few miles away. My parents never let me be home alone, but they had to go get groceries from a town 40 minutes away and I begged not to go. I just wanted to stay home and play Barbies. They agreed. I was having the time of my life. But all of a sudden, I hear both my dogs barking outside. They only bark like they did when a car pulls up. I am on the second floor of my home. The front door is on the first floor, right by the stairs to the basement. I look out my window and just stare because I had a sinking feeling in my stomach and I start screaming. I see a man walking up my driveway. So I start hyperventilating and crying and wondering how this person even got here. My driveway is pretty long, thank God, but it is covered in trees. He's about 20 feet from my front door and that thing is never locked. So I bolted down the stairs, and thankfully got there in time. It honestly was like something out of the movies, because as I was in front of the door, locking it, I heard a pounding on the door. Then I heard the door handle trying to open. I book it to the dining room to make sure the screen door is locked, and I call my dad on the home phone. He starts swearing, not directly at me, mind you. Like, what the hell? Blah, blah, blah. I hear him going through the garage, and I'm just freaking the hell out, and he's still trying to open the door at the same time. He eventually goes through the yard, and seemed to be looking for something. My dog is small, but she is barking up a storm. I try to call my closest neighbor, who was a retired cop, but of course, he wasn't home. It felt like 30 minutes, but the guy finally leaves, and my dad and mom get home. It turns out, it was a very, very drunk neighbor. His house was like 7 miles away. He came into our yard looking for my dad, because he drove his car into the ditch, and we live on a tire farm. It wasn't uncommon for my dad to help these people. They were drunk all the time, and looked for rides. But... Anyway, my dad took his gun and went to their house and threatened them to never do shit like that again. If I remember correctly, 
they were trying to get into our vehicles as well. Honestly, scariest time of my life. I didn't stay home alone for a long time after that. Even thinking back on it, my heart still races. I don't think he would have done anything to me because they respected my dad. He's like six foot five and also has anger issues. But at the time, I didn't know that. Edit. To add some information, these people ended up making me a dream catcher as well as a tribal blanket. They had 10 people living in the two bedroom house of theirs, so I didn't recognize the man. But their house ended up getting raided for drugs or something, and two deceased dogs were found stacked behind the stove. So, maybe like 50% nice, 50% harmful. So, quite a number of years ago, my cousin and I were on summer break at her house, and we were playing 007 on the Nintendo GameCube and passing the time, when all of a sudden we heard what sounded like broken glass on the tile. The TV was up pretty loud, mind you, so we paused the game. We were tensely waiting for another sound. Then, we heard the sound of flip-flop sandals walking around in the kitchen area. So, my cousin called her mom, slash, my aunt. She asked my aunt, who was a nurse, if she was home from work yet. My aunt was not home, and of course, wanted to know why we were asking. Once we told her, she told us to crawl out the window and run to the neighbors as quickly as we could. Meanwhile, she would call the cops. The bedroom window luckily led to the backyard, just next to the gate. So we get the hell out of there. Fast forward an hour or so later, and the cops informed my aunt that there had been an obvious break-in. The window on the back door had been broken, and there was a note left for my aunt. Now, my aunt had recently gotten into a serious relationship with this super nice guy. We'll call him... Josh. Well, Josh's ex-wife, however, was not so nice. She had at some point followed my aunt home and found out where she lived. She then proceeded to break in through the back door, rummage through a bunch of stuff, and leave a horrible note for my aunt. I can imagine what it said. From what I heard, she was arrested. Now, I'm not sure if any charges were actually pressed, but she later committed suicide, leaving behind a daughter and son, whom I've both gone to school with. I also later found out that she suffered from severe bipolar disorder, as well as a couple of other things. Very tragic, but I'm glad me and my cousin weren't caught up in our psychotic episode more than what we were. It still freaks me out, just thinking about all of this. I am super creeped out right now. I, 27 year old female, was completely alone and sleeping in my bed in the middle of the night last night. I was woken up by the sound of someone trying to push up on my locked bedroom window. I couldn't see the window because it was past my footboard on the other side of the bedroom and of course I was laying down, but I knew that unmistakable sound of the window being locked and the jiggling sound it makes because I've locked myself out plenty of times and I've tried to get through that window before myself. Anyway, I sat up to get a look and saw a dark silhouette of a person looking in the window. I laid back down for a second, really confused and tired, and when it actually clicked what I had seen, I sat right back up. They were now gone. I tried to get back to sleep, but I was spooked for the rest of the evening. In the morning, I thought I might have dreamt all of it, so I called everyone I knew that it possibly could have been, and nobody I knew knew anything at all. Nobody was at my house. 
Nobody I knew would just try to get into my bedroom window in the middle of the night, especially when I don't think this person even knocked on the front before trying to open the window. I went outside to investigate to see if I was just crazy. I looked at the window, and there I saw the handprints of whoever was trying to slide up on the glass. Also, it had rained, so I could see muddy shoe prints going to and from my window. To this day, I have no idea who they were or what they wanted, but I'm so glad my window was locked. This story of mine, it's actually pretty brief. The whole thing lasted for about an hour, but I think it could be worth a read. So I think I was 14 years old, and I'd spent the night at my best friend's house who was a year younger than me. We were pretty responsible. We were well-behaved kids, so we were trusted to be left home alone at times. That morning... It was just three girls in the house, me, my friend, and her older sister, who was actually just about to leave to work. Parents were at work too. It was around 10 to 11 a.m., and I was laying in her bed, half awake, trying to fall back asleep. I'm a huge, light sleeper, and her sister would always be the loudest in the morning while she got ready. And although me and her older sister low-key weren't that fond of each other, I never said anything. We'll call my friend, Gabby, and her sister, Cheyenne. I could hear Cheyenne making her way out the front door, Gabby behind her to close and lock it after her. I heard Cheyenne say something along the lines of, make sure everything is locked, and how there's a weird man across the street sitting on the curb facing the house. So she leaves. I got up because going back to sleep was no option. I have had sleep issues for as long as I can remember. So we're sitting on her bed with pancakes and we were just chilling, eating our breakfast. This was all like 10 minutes after Cheyenne had left. So me and Gabby were just talking and I brought up how her sister said something about a guy across the street. And I said something along the lines of, Your sister is so dramatic. I kid you not. There's knocking on the front door right after I said that. Me and Gabby just sat there looking at each other in silence. Her bedroom was located at the front of the home, so the window faced the street. I peeped through, but I didn't see a guy across the street. I creeped to the front door, and I made a tiny peek to see who it was because her front door had this big old window with some shades. I didn't want whoever was there to see me. Well, lo and behold, it was him. It was the guy Cheyenne warned us about. I knew because Gabby silently freaked out and was like, what the hell, it's him. Now here's a quick visual description of him from what I remember. African American male, he was dressed regularly but I can't remember if he looked older or younger. So anyway, we ran to the bathroom and called her sister. Gabby's house never really got visitors. I know because I was literally always there myself and never saw any visitors. Her neighborhood was predominantly Hispanics and whites. The only African-American male to ever come around their house was a good friend of her dad's, but it wasn't him. So there we are locked inside the bathroom, flipping out. Gabby said something like, He saw me after Cheyenne left. He knows I'm home. I was beyond scared like, what if he somehow finds his way inside? We just knew he didn't have good intentions. He obviously knows there are young girls in the house by themselves. Like, what the hell? So her sister was on the freeway and wasn't able to come back. So she told her to call their uncle who lives close by. Her uncle Mike rode a motorcycle. He was a really nice guy, but tough looking, a macho guy. Me and Gabby are like sisters almost, so I'm really close with her whole family as well. Besides, Cheyenne. So while we're waiting for Uncle Mike to show up, the strange guy starts frantically ringing the doorbell. That 
started to freak us out. It got quiet for a little bit, and then he started to knock on the door really slowly, and it was the creepiest thing ever. All of our dogs outside now started barking like crazy. Then, before we know it, we hear her uncle's bike pull up. In relief, we let ourselves out the bathroom and run outside. So, us two little girls were like, Thank God you made it here quickly. OMG, we were so scared. Because we genuinely were. We had no idea who that man was. And he knew damn well he had no business being here. The story isn't over just yet. When her uncle pulled up, he pointed him out. Is that him down there? Gabby lived across from an elementary school, which was only just a few houses down. The dude was standing in front of the school, facing us still watching the house. Whoever that man was, I'm just glad we didn't ever see him again. Or at least, I think we never saw him again. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of the Creepy Fox Scary Stories podcast. If you did enjoy, then make sure to leave a like rating and leave a comment down below letting me know what you all thought. Also, if you are a first-time listener joining us for the first time and you did enjoy, then consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell beside it. As I mentioned in the intro, we do upload some of the best true crime and scary stories content that you'll hear on YouTube, so subscribe and look forward to more content. Speaking of stories, if you yourself do have a story that you'd like to submit, then do send it in with the user submissions email on screen. That's tcfnarrations at gmail.com. Now I'd like to go ahead and give a very special thank you and a shout out to all my channel members. Thank you to Spunky the Nutcase, Bo, Rice and Beans, Linz, Maribel, Dread Archive, Sean, Jen, Robbie, and Susie. Thank you so much. Your support means the world. And it helps me with continuation of releasing brand new Scary Stories content and focusing more on the channel. Also, of course, thank you to the regular viewers who watch the videos, leave likes, comments, and share the videos with family and friends. Anyway, that is going to go ahead and do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast. Take care, and have yourself an amazing day.